Let's watch this smart Band 9 IELTS interview by Ryansh from Mumbai, India. And after part 1, 2, 3 of the speaking section, I will explain to you the fluency, the coherence, grammar and vocabulary that Ryansh used to get this perfect band score. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I'm recording this for clerical purposes. The candidate number is 91378876. This is examiner number 9214. We are currently conducting this exam in Mumbai. The time right now is 13.30. Let's begin. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. May I see your identification? Gladly. Here is my passport and my credential. Please take a look. What is your full name? My full name is Riyash Verma, but you can refer to me by my first name, Riyash. Okay, Riyash. Where do you live? I live in Mumbai in the state of Maharashtra in a family home with three bedrooms along with my two siblings and parents. Let's talk about nature. What is your favorite part of nature? That's tough because I really love landscapes and the living world. But if I had to choose, I will definitely choose the ocean. It's simply calming and sublime. And I go to beach whenever I have the chance. Where do you go to enjoy fresh air? I go to seaside or hiking to get a breath of fresh air. Of course, Mumbai is quite smoggy, so you have to go out of the city quite a ways. Have you done any nature activities recently? Yes, I have been hiking regularly with my friends around Palgar. It is a beautiful place with nice views and clean air. And I think it's really good for me, like for exercise and for socialization. What do you do to protect the environment? I do a lot of things. I recycle, reuse the plastic containers, and I never throw garbage on the roads or on the streets. And I do have a reusable tea mug. If you could visit any natural place, where would you go? There are so many places I would love to visit, but if I had the chance where I could go, that's definitely gonna be Grand Canyon in US. I have seen the pictures and it's quite exciting. And you know, it's also one of the natural wonders of the world. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. Please do not touch the paper with the questions. You will have one minute to read the questions Think about your answers, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. In the one minute preparation time, you can take notes. You have your note paper and your pencil in front of you. Describe a visit to a different city than your hometown. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Before watching part two, the cue card, here is some great help for you to improve your score for your next IELTS exam. We have partnered with Cambly, a world-class app that lets you practice your English one-on-one -on -one with a native English speaking tutor 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere, anytime. It is the only app in India that lets you practice your English with a native British, American, Canadian, or Australian tutor. You can even choose the IELTS program to specifically target your skills for your next exam. Cambly has generously given us this discount code to save 22% off any three month plans. This code is only valid for users in India and you can find this in the video description with the link. You can also choose from one and six month plans or pay as you go. Download Cambly today and begin learning with a native English speaking tutor. Now let's watch parts two and three of this interview and the lesson.
We're on sheer one minute preparation. Time is up. Please begin speaking. Last year, I had visited city of Ahmednagar, which is about 260 kilometers east of Mumbai for three days. It is a small and ancient city with a population of about 350,000 people. It is quite a bit smaller than Mumbai, but I find it more peaceful and many of the citizens are more friendly and approachable. So I went there with one of my friend named Sejal for a cultural history project for our school. So we thought it would be great to go on a drive and have a look over there, like what kind of places does that city have. So we went there, we found a local hotel and we stayed there for three days. While we were there, we visit a couple of really cool places like Ahmednagar Fortress. It's an old castle which is in ruins but still in pretty good shape. Another one was Ahmednagar train station, an old interesting building and Salamat Khan's tomb. It's an ancient monument in the city. We took a lot of pictures over there, not just as mementos, but as a part of our history project. Some other highlights of our trip included eating delicious food at local restaurants and lots of hiking from one place to next. It was a pretty short trip and a long drive there and back, but it was really fun and I think it was well worth it. I really enjoyed the people, the food, and I shared time with my friend. All right, I will stop you there. I'm taking back the questions. Please uh, put the note paper to the side and turn it over along with the pencil pen. Thank you. And now we will continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you a question connected to your response and uh, some questions on this topic. Would you go back there again? Definitely. If I get a chance, I will go back there in future with my family and will show them the places I have visited and will try the food again. Let's talk about travel. Some people like to plan their trips. Others prefer to be spontaneous. Which do you think is better? I think it's really good to be spontaneous because it makes the trip more relaxing and exciting because people tend to follow up their schedule for the work and school. I think it's not nice to have it on the vacation because like when I went to Ahmednagar, with my friend, we didn't plan anything. That's why we were able to find some hidden restaurant that were really good. What are important preparations before taking a trip to another country? I think it's good to read up on the customs of that city or place we are visiting because some things may be offensive or may hurt the people living, who live over there. And like some places really don't like skimpy clothes, especially for women. And I think the other thing we need to check on is the weather so that we can pack the right clothes. When people travel to some countries, they need to request a permit like a tourist visa. Why is this? I really don't know the politics behind this, but I think it's just because so that they can limit the number of people from certain places and to know why they're visiting that place. Let's talk about tourism. Tourism is a bigger business now than ever before. Why is this? I think tourism industry has been booming before COVID because People these days have more money and more time than past generation. And moreover, they can go to far places like in no time because we have planes and trains to get to other destinations. So I think that's why it is being more popular these days. But because of COVID, it has slowed down a bit for sure. Can you think of any new kinds of tourism that hadn't existed 50 years ago? I think ecotourism and culinary tourism are popular these days. People love to visit out in nature, like I want to go to Grand Canyon. And some people just want to taste delicious foods around the world. For instance, going to Italy for having Neapolitan pizza. This hadn't been around half a century ago. Many people make travel arrangements using the internet. How has this changed tourism? I think internet has made it way easier because people can pay online, book their tickets and get the updates from all around the world for the weather or any changes to their plans. Recently, I visited to Canada and I booked my ticket online and it was really convenient because I get all the information on my phone that really made my 
travels go smoothly. I think internet has absolutely revolutionized the tourism industry. That is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking section of the IELTS exam. You will have your mark available online in two days, and you will have your official certificate in the mail in about 10 days. Goodbye. Thank you. So why is Ryansh's communication so intelligent sounding that he deserves this perfect Ben 9, an expert user of the English language for his score on this interview? Well, right away, from the very start, Ryansh is confident, clear, and fluent with his responses. In part one, when he is responding to the first question about nature, what is his favorite part of nature, immediately he uses complex grammar, if I had to choose, showing his proficiency with conditionals. He uses high-level vocabulary like sublime and collocations like the natural world. It's this kind of strong start that guarantees those high band scores. In part two, the long part, Ryansh continues to hold up his intelligent conversation by structuring his response well giving a clear description of the city that he's visiting with lots of details, talking about going to restaurants, visiting monuments like the tomb, the castle, and the railway station. He sounds original, explaining to the examiner that he went there because of a cultural history project with his friend. His part two response has a beginning, a middle, and an end. He closes the response by explaining that even though it was a long trip, it was well worth it. This tells the examiner that he has completed his answer and he is ready to move on. It's this kind of narrative that you need to get that high perfect band 9. Ryanj continues in a clever and confident way all the way through part three to the end of the interview. He continues to use high level vocabulary. When he is asked about the different types of tourism, he's able to respond with ecotourism and culinary tourism, also giving examples with his explanations and connecting to his part two response like ecotourism with the Grand Canyon and culinary tourism with visiting Italy to eat pizza. Finally, Ryansh has a strong finish. When he is asked about how technology and the internet has influenced tourism, he provides a clear answer reflecting the present perfect and explaining how he has applied the internet in his own life for his travels to Canada. It's this kind of strong start, middle, and strong finish in part three that will get you that perfect band nine score. You do not need native English speaking pronunciation or perfect grammar to get a band nine on your speaking. You must simply sound intelligent and give complete answers with a good amount of detail using complex grammar and high-level vocabulary. You can do it, just keep practicing. Good luck on your next IELTS exam. For more video lessons like this one, original practice exams, and an interactive course, visit and join our premium package at aehelp.com. Download and link the app, Academic IELTS Help. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video. Click right up here. And click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.